Hello, 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 and thank you for joining us. Thank you for stopping by the movement. We are the movement, a motivational organization geared to educate minds, empower, nurture, and transform. Um, and as Annette so affectionately says, we are a movement to move. <laughs> Love to roll her neck when, we, when she says movement to move. So we are a movement to move, and we are... Our, our aim is to help you thrust into your purpose so that you can start living your best life and win. We have tapped into a winner's um, mindset, a winning philosophy, and we want everybody to win. We win and we want to see you win and you win and you win. We want to see everybody win. And uh, we like to come together every Wednesday. You tap into Can We Talk, where we have topics, discussions, and we just kind of let our hair down and have a real conversation. So... Um, we're, we're grateful that you came by. You could have gone anywhere else, but you stopped here, and we just want to say thank you. I want to let Annette greet you before we get started with our discussion. Well, hello, everybody. Well, I'm excited tonight. I was thinking about uh, on July the 4th here in Daytona, we had the, the races, but the difference between what we do and what they do, there will only be one winner. But tonight, everybody who hears this, you're all winners. So mm -hmm. we're excited, and we're looking forward to sharing with you tonight. <laughs> we are all winners. I'm happy to be a part of the winner's circle. That's, that's one thing. I'm happy to be a part of it. So tonight's um, topic, uh, again, you have Annette to thank for these topics. She just comes up with them and then we just have to fill in the blanks and figure it out. I'm like, wow, okay. This is great. So tonight's topic is soul detox. And there's one saying that I ran across in studying for this, and it says, we are not body with a soul, but with, we're soul with a body. And we have to understand that whatever is going on on the inside of us, it manifests itself on the outside. That's right. And uh, most of us cannot completely hide what we're going through. It comes out in other ways. You may think you're hiding and you don't realize that people can tell when there's something that's slightly off with you. I know that when I'm slightly off, there are a few people who can really dig in. And then, I, you know, when people ask me constantly, I'm frustrated because that means that I know they can see it. And I'm like, mm, I'm good, I'm good. No, I'm good. You know, I'm going through some things, but I'm all right. You know, all is well. <laughs> and I'm dying. <laughs> yeah, yes. Just literally dying inside. And a lot of us do that. We... We'll say we're fine when technically we're not physically, emotionally, mentally, spiritually, we're not fine. And we'll say we're good. You're not, you know, you're not good. Are you going to be good? Absolutely. But, you know, my mom used to say, tell the truth and shame the devil. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> be honest with yourself. Yes. You know, it's, 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 uh, I'm, I'm, I'm feeling a little testy right now or, Things are not really that great right now, but I'm just so hopeful and I'm, I'm staying positive. Pray yeah. for me. I'm staying positive. Be honest, but to be like, I'm good. I'm good. I'm good. You know, there's a thin line between faith and foolishness. You yeah. can be sick as a dog and be like, oh, thank you. I no, I need you to specifically pray against blah, 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 blah. This is what is happening to me. This is the attack on my body, and I need a specific prayer. And so we have to learn to be honest. So periodically, because of the fact that we, you know, um, just people in general, we go through these phases of detox. You know, it's a very popular term this day and age. Everybody's going through detox, mainly health detox, because what happens to the human body naturally is that we are exposed to toxins. We ingest them. We are exposed to all kinds of metals and pesticides. And, you know, there's no way to keep a person 100% toxic free. There's always going to be toxins that make their way into your body through some shape or form. And one thing I always tell people all the time is that what we don't understand is that our skin is the largest organ of the body. So I'm very particular about, you know, I use natural soap. I use coconut oil. I'm very, very, I don't, I think I may use lotion once or twice a year. If I can't find something, I want to lotion my hands and my elbows, but you won't catch me like lotion in my entire body with lotion. I've been off of lotion so long that I don't even like the way it feels. It leaves some type of residue. So I got into using coconut oil because I figured if I would eat it, then I would put it on my skin 
and my skin is the largest organ of the body and everything you put on your skin goes straight into your bloodstream. So I'm very particular about that. So um, our bodies still, even from as, as careful as I am with the, uh, with the coconut oil, there are still so many different ways that we get toxins into our system. We wash our clothes in, in a laundry detergent and, and we put a dryer sheet. There are toxins in almost everything. Yeah. But one of the things that we have to understand is that our bodies are naturally designed to perform a metabolic detoxification pathway. And what it does is it neutralizes and removes all of the harmful stuff, the chemicals and everything through elimination from our kidneys, our liver, our digestive system. So we eliminate daily. Well, most of us eliminate daily. You know, a lot of us who don't have that daily elimination of the other form, you need to check something because that's not normal. You need a daily elimination. When you lay down to sleep at night, your body detoxes itself. And when you wake up in the morning, you should eliminate those toxins from everything from the night before. But like most of us, we, have, we tend to overload on toxins. We overload. We eat a lot of crap that we shouldn't. True. We are exposed to a lot of stuff that we don't even realize. We're touching things and putting our hand in our mouth, not washing our hands. So we have a lot of exposure to toxins. And every now and then, our system needs a break and we have to detox. I've been going through detox um, situations for a long time now during my weight loss process. And part of our system is that we detox the body, we give the body a break, and there are certain things that go on in that process. Well, the same thing that happens to your body happens to you emotionally and spiritually. Yeah. You become exposed to so much stuff, gossip, foolishness. I call it um, stupid television. I call it, uh, and, I, and I'm, I'm guilty. I mean, I do it. I love YouTube. I go on and I watch all kinds of crazy videos and shows and stuff. There are certain things that I like to watch, but I, I may not be an everyday television person where I'm sitting in front of the TV all day because I'm not. I don't. But there are times that I do. There are times that I'm on Netflix. There are times that I'm on I'm in front of the television watching something that I taped, and sometimes I'm catching up. I spend the day and catch up on all of my stuff that I like to film and watch all my stupid TV and find all of my 90 Day Fiance crap, all of that mess I like to watch. <laughs> so there are times that, um, you know, I'm putting all kinds of stuff into my mental psyche, but am I putting some of the, I'm putting the right stuff in? Yeah. So we get, just like our bodies get overloaded with toxins, yeah. we get overloaded with toxins mentally and spiritually, and it clogs up the pathway for that detoxification. The Bible says to um, renew your mind every day. And very, very um, few of us actually do that on a daily basis if we're really honest. We wake up, yawn, scratch, take a shower, brush our teeth, eat, and go on about our day. But we haven't necessarily gone through that renewal process, renewing our mind. And I encourage people to get into the habit of doing that. Get into the habit of making your mind fresh every day. Just like our bodies detox at night, we get up in the morning and we're flushing those toxins. Our spirits detox daily. We need to pull some of that stuff out, some of the foolishness, because it gets in our psyche and it overplays and plays and plays and plays and replays and replays, and it clogs the pathway of a spiritual metabolic um, detoxification. So our topic tonight is that we're dealing with soul detox. So I'm going to open up our, um, our presentation so we can really dig into this um, conversation tonight. Yes. It is definitely a needed one because, you know, like I said, most of us, we don't take the time to do this. We rarely take the time. I can tell you, I know people who probably have never actually done a physical detox and they're, you know, probably in their 40s and 50s and have never really taken the time to detox. And, you know, sometimes it, that stuff grows in us until we're old. And then, we, you know, well, how did I get cancer? Well, how did this happen? And how did that happen? We're all exposed. Some get it, some don't. I don't know why others do and others don't. But I, I know one thing. I can try and do everything I can to, to um, deter it. And I think that the same thing that we would do physically, because a lot of times when we start reaching older age, 
You start trying to do that. Oh, I need to do that. I need to stop eating salt. Oh, I sure need to do better. I'm going to stop eating fried food. I'm going to do better. I'm going to do better. But we've already dug ourselves into <laughs> partially our grave with the fork. And then we're trying to climb out. <laughs> when that same fork comes around with this. <laughs> so with the soul detox, you know, a lot of us are guilty just as we are physically that we have not taken the time to detox ourselves spiritually and mentally. And this is what we want to challenge you to do tonight. So again, we're dealing with soul detox. I'm going to go into our first let me see if I can get my thing going here. There it is. Our first um, thing tonight is it's time to clear the room. All right. It's time to clear the room. Now, this has nothing to do with detox, but I just want to share this little story with you. There's a singer that I work with sometimes, and he has, you know, he gets really intense and nervous, not really nervous, but he's very serious about the time that he spends recording. And for anybody who's ever been into the studio, it's hard to record when you got like 30 people on the other side and everybody's listening and they're talking. You can't hear them. You don't know what's going on. You can see them laughing. You don't know if they're laughing at you. They're talking. It's like a lot. It's just too busy. And you're trying to work. You have to focus. So you're trying to sing and it's all kinds of stuff going on in the other room. And he would say to me, Anita, it's time to clear the room. Can you clear that room, please? Because he needed to be able to focus and he couldn't focus with all of those people in the room. Mm. So when I, every time I say this statement, I think about him. His name is Sam Ventura. He would always say, can you please clear the room? It's time to clear the room. I'm ready. I'm ready. I'm ready to go in. And that's when you're ready. When you know that you're ready for something good, when you're ready to move forward in your purpose, when you're ready to move forward in your vision, when you're really ready to stop playing around with this thing and do something, you're going to do everything you're going to do. And the first thing you need to do is clear the room. So when we clear the room, we go into detox mode. So what is detox? I'm glad you asked that question because I'm going to gladly answer. And y'all know how to question. You know I'm going there. So <laughs> detoxification. What is detox? Now, this was interesting when I looked at it from the two tenses of the verb. The, the intransitive verb said, to subject oneself to or to undergo detoxification. And detoxing is basically you're ridding your body or you're ridding your mind of toxins. So when, when you look at the intransitive verb, it means to subject oneself to or to undergo detoxification. Then when you look at the transitive verb, it says to remove a harmful or intoxicating substance. Now, what was interesting to me about those two definitions was it's the same word. It's one word. It's a verb, but one has an intransitive tense and the other mm -hmm. one has a transitive tense. And I've told you millions of times the difference between the two. Intransitive is non-motive. That means that there's something blocking. There's always something between you and the blessing on the other side. With transitive, it's nothing in between you and the object of blessing. Everything is a straight path. It's like, okay. boom, you're right in there. There is motion, there's movement, and there's forward movement. The, the first part, the intransitive verb means you're there, you understand it, but you're not doing anything about it. So with the intransitive verb, when I looked at where it says to subject oneself, that means by force. Hmm. That means you're forcing yourself to undergo detoxification. But when you look at the transitive verb, you're just straight up removing. You're getting it out. You're not, you're not forcing yourself. You understand that it's time to do something. And when you go through this process, you should never go into a process, whether it's physical detox or a mental detox, where it's being forced. That's like trying to force someone to believe or force someone. Like I see it all the time where people want to force their kids into voice lessons. I don't take those. I'm like, I don't want anybody forced. I don't want any crying babies. You tell me the child is a prodigy and the child show up and cries the entire lesson, they're not ready. Or you show up with a kid who would rather be playing in the park and he's sitting there like, la, 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 la. That is not someone who wants to be here. That's forced. You're, he's, mm. he's being subjected 
to take lessons. And when, you sub when you're being subjected to detox, that's more so like when I watch my 600 pound life, it's always funny to watch those people that Dr. Now puts in the hospital for, um, for them to start the process of losing weight. And then you send them home and they gain all the way back because they weren't mentally there. Yeah. The only reason they lost weight in the hospital was because they were subjected to it. They didn't have a choice. But when you want to do it, you just start removing. So I want us to, to exercise the transitive verb of detox and just get into the mood like, you know what? I'm going to remove all of this stuff that's messing with me. And what happens is, like I said, we, we subject ourselves to a whole lot of toxins and we end up with soul toxicity. Mm. Soul toxicity is where your mind and your spirit has been infiltrated by foreign substances as it relates to purpose, vision, and progress. Mm. Okay. You have allowed your senses. Remember, we, talk, we have talked about this before. We're inside of our soul realm. When we go past our flesh, in our soul realm is where we have certain things like consciousness and our affection and all of those things that tie into the very essence of who we are. Our thought process, our reasoning. Those are the things that are in our soul realm and our will. So when you're toxic in there, then so much of what is not of God and not what you're supposed to have starts to seep into your spirit. And we have to be very careful because this is what happens when we get soul ties. We get soul ties to relationships, to people, to church. We get a soul tie. I heard somebody say something one day. They said, you know, um, people love their church. I think sometimes people love their church more than they love God. Yeah. Like, wow. wow that's thought. I, I know I've been there. Where you love the church more than you love God. I'm like, you're loving the organization. You're loving the whole process because we can do church real good, but can we live Christ? And that's the, there's a big difference. There's a difference between the two. And a lot of times we don't, we spend so much time in the other that we don't know the difference. That's so our, so we, we start getting stuff that's tied to our soul. We get into unwarranted relationships or non-relationship relationships, as Brenda said, before we get into non-relationship relationships and we get into things that are not necessarily what we are supposed to be tying to and everything in our soul becomes toxic. Our reason, we can't even think straight. Our affection is all, our emotions are just all over the place. Our vision is cloudy and muddy. We can't see, we can't hear, we can't do, we can't move. We can't do anything because we have a muddy pathway. Remember, in the physical, there's a metabo meta uh, metabolic detoxification that takes place. So our spiritual metabolic detoxification can't even take place because it's too muddy. It's too crowded. Mm. It's too cluttered. Mm. Too cluttered. Mm. So what we have to do is go through the purpose. We have to deal with the purpose why, of why we're doing it. We're doing it because we're a mess. Then we have to deal with the process and the plan. The purpose for this whole thing is to clear the room. You have to cleanse yourself of all of the foolishness. That's the whole purpose. And I know you might think you're deeper than life and you speak in tongues and you pray every day and all of that, but sometimes <laughs> you can be so heavenly bound or no earthly good. Sometimes you have to sit down and really just make an assessment. Oh. Sit down, write down some things. Write down what your thought patterns are all day. Write down, you know, are you even spending time on yourself? Are you spending mm -hmm. so much time praying and fasting that you look poor and hungry and dry mouth and hair not combed, but you want a husband? It's like we have all, all of this stuff that just muddies us up. Cleanse it. Get rid of all of those things. You need to just start over. So just clean it up. My mom used to say, sometimes you have to mess up the house to clean it up. So you need to start picking that stuff apart. You know how you go through your clothes when you need to purge and you have a pile that you want to keep and a pile that you want to throw away. And you're sitting there looking like, okay, am I gonna keep this? And then you start, then then we start looking through the pile that you're throwing away, like, but I can probably wear that in the, if I lose 10 pounds. No, get rid of that stuff. <laughs> get rid of it. Cleanse. Because when you, you know, the other thing about it is that you that's the purpose. The purpose is to cleanse and the process through the process, you're healing. You're gonna cleanse and you're gonna heal. 
Hmm. Because you can't even begin to put salve on the sore until you first clean it off. True. If that True. sore is dirty and if that spot is dirty, you can't begin to the first thing a doctor, a mom, or whomever does when they're treating a sore is they clean it. And when you clean it, it hurts. It burns. So there's some stuff that you just have to burn out of your life. You have to pull out that alcohol. You be blowing. Wait, wait, wait. wait. Blow, it, blow it. Blow it while you pour it. <laughs> You're right. So you cleanse and you heal. Because when you clean it, then you can apply the salve and heal. And the other thing that happens, and then there's a plan after that that allows you to rebalance. You're going to rebalance your life. You're going to rebalance your time. You're going to rebalance everything because now you get it. You get what the deal is. But before you can do all of that, you have to first recognize the signs. You have to realize that you've been, you've been getting this this little clogged up thing, you've been getting that for a long time. And I know uh, sometimes we think that um, toxins just come. Like, I don't know where that came from. I don't know how in the world that got constipated. I don't know how the <laughs> No. That was that a what you say that didn't just come overnight. <laughs> that did not just happen overnight. <laughs> That's been a process that you've been in for a long time. Yeah, you're right. It, you've been in that for a long time. So I want you to recognize the signs. And when you recognize the signs, then all, you know, you'll start to get some healing. Are you feeling fed up? Do you not have the energy to move in your purpose? And I want y'all to start answering me. If any of this applies to you, I want you to type in me. Are you fed up and you feel like you have no energy to keep moving? Would you like to uproot all of your bad thoughts? Are you having problems beginning or sticking to a healthier spiritual lifestyle? Are you feeling frustrated because you're not achieving what you want? Are you seeking a fresh start or a new beginning? Ain't but one person on here feeling that way. I know that's not true. I could type because I was reading. I got two, <laughs> got two people because I know I answered me, 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 me to all of them. I'm me, 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 me all the way down this list. And if that's you, if you really have been filling yourself with all of that, you want so badly to move forward and it just seems like you can't. I want you to type in, I need to be taught. I need to detox. And sometimes when we detox people, a lot of times, now I go, I do, I do detox a lot. And I have a detox that's coming up that I'm doing personally. And uh, well, I do all of them personally, but I was doing some in a group. I have a group that we call Eat Well, Live Well, Be Well. And we have been detoxing off and on throughout the year. But I have two different things that I'm doing because we're not doing that one vegan detox, that 16-day cleanse again until September. But I have two things that I want to do before September. And it's causing me to come to the realization that I'm like, okay, I need to do this for me. I recognize certain signs of certain things that are happening, not only in my body physically, but spiritually, because I realize that while I'm going through all of the physical detoxifications, I have not detoxed spiritually and this yes. is why i needed to go on this i'm like this is for me i need to make sure that i detox yes. this because there's so much that i want to do and so much that i have to do and time keeps ticking it waits for no man you will be this time next year still talking about your dream still sure talking will. about your purpose and the devil is a liar i declare I will not be talking about it this time next year. I will be in it and operating on a level that I know I should be. And I am the only hold up. Why? Because my pathway is muddy. Yeah, that's it. Metabolic detoxification system, it ain't working. It ain't working. So now I got to do what I need to do. Amen. Amen. <laughs>
All right. Soul food. What are you eating? Now, I'm not talking about the soul food with the collard greens and the fried chicken and macaroni <laughs> and cheese. I'm not talking about <laughs> that kind of soul food. But I'm talking about your soul. What are you eating? What are you digesting? What is going on with you? What are you feeding your soul? Are you feeding your soul with, with the right food, with the right ideas? Um, um, Nita was talking about it. What are we doing with our soul? Well, the first thing I, I when I was really, I was studying that, I was looking, I said, man, I never thought about, you know, what am I feeding my spirit, man? Because hmm. whatever you feed, the most will grow. Amen. And the reason why our spirit man haven't grown because and it's still a little midget because we feed everything else. Oh, we got all these grown Amen. men and then, your own spiritual growth. Yes, yes you got a midget. <laughs> wow. Yeah, so you know, so what we need to do is um monitor your intake. What are you bringing in? Uh, when I was looking at mon monitoring your intake, I was thinking about negative people. Uh, you know, when you around negative people, you you get a bad attitude. Have you ever been around somebody when they come in, come around and negative, and all of a sudden it almost like that spirit jump on you. Get the room. Yes, they they come in and they shift the whole atmosphere. So, and also you need to refocus your thoughts because you can be so caught up with one thought. I have a tendency to replay. I've said this before. Replay everything that happened to me the day before. And I catch myself thinking about like one or two things. I should have did it this way. I should have did it that way. You know, and, I, and so I need to take and refocus my thoughts because I can't do anything about yesterday. Mm -hmm. I can't mm -hmm. do anything about a, a minute ago. And so we, we take in that into our, into our soul realm and it causes us to get off course and it causes us to use time that could be used for something else. And also it drains your energy. Have, mm -hmm. do you ever, have you ever thought about why you're so tired? I sometimes I get up I get up in the morning I'm tired because I'm drained because of what I've allowed to come into my system I'm drained because what I've allowed my ear gates to hear and you have to be careful with your ear gates because the ear gates goes to your heart and a lot of time what you hear it, it even though it goes to your ear but it actually ends up in your heart so you have to monitor your intake what am I what am I receiving what am I allowing people to speak see I, there's certain things you can't say to me, I, I, if, if, a per, if I'm around a person and they get too negative, I'm going to walk off. Even on my job when i around people, oh, this job, oh, they get on my, oh, this like this. Now, everybody's going to say a little something, but I'm talking about when it becomes almost unbearable. I mean, the whole time. How you doing? Girl, child, mm, if anything bad. Never, you, some, some people never say anything good. Mm -hmm. And so you t that, that goes into your inner man. So you have to make sure that your soul is getting the right food. But not only that, you need to eliminate uh, toxin from your diet. In, in other words, get rid of the poison. One of the things oh. that you have to do, you have to, when you're going through, in the natural, you have to drink water. They, they say you have to drink at least two quarts of water. And so in order to get rid of poison in our soul, sometimes we have to get into the word. The word is water. So we need to uh, allow the word to penetrate our soul. And then we have to learn how to breathe deep, deeply and expel oxygen and let it circulate in your system. Sometimes you have to stop, and I've said this more than once, and you just have to breathe. I do this especially because I'm quick at the mouth, so sometimes I stop. Because mm -hmm. if you say something, I just, you know, I'm shooting back, and that's just not the way <laughs> it should be. So okay. I, <laughs> I step back, and I, and I take a break, and I, and I breathe. And once I, I, I let, you know, breathe out and then breathe in, I, it give me a few seconds to collect my thoughts. And it allow the right stuff to come inside so I don't, you know, because <laughs> you just have to be careful what comes out. Mm -hmm. And then also you got to learn how to transfer your stress by emphasizing positive emotions. Mm -hmm. You know, I have to tell myself, I can do this. You mm -hmm. know, I have to say, you know what, it, I may be having a problem here, but you know, I know I can't do it. I'm going to get help. You mm -hmm. know, I had to tell myself, girl, you got this. I have to say, add a girl, add a boy. Mm -hmm. I have to constantly tell myself how you say, look in the mirror and say, you know what, girl, you, you bad all by yourself. Got it going mm -hmm. on. And one thing about it, you know, you're going to get an amen because a person who in the mirror looking at you <laughs> is yourself. So you make sure you got the right audience. Mm -hmm. If I go in front of me, I, I have the right audience. I'd be a fool to tell myself, you know, you ain't got it going on. Mm -hmm. So you had to make sure that you speak positive um, affirmations. You know, you, that's, you're taking that in. 
And if you keep telling yourself long enough, after a while, you're going to start believing it. When you keep telling yourself, I can do this, I'm more than a conqueror. I can, I, I can, I can jump off the cliff. I may uh, flap like Anita say, flap, flap, and I may even fall, but how about I'm going to get up and dust myself off and go back on that same cliff? So you have to keep telling yourself, you get scripture, uh, get quotes, whatever you have to do to motiv motivate yourself and, and get you to the point that you need to be. And then you need to flush your digestive system. And when I was looking at this, there's at least four steps to the digestive system. Of course, there's a little more, um, but for our purpose, it's ingestion. That's, that's when you bring in, that's when you bring in food, your large particles of food. That's when you, when you chew the food up and that's what you bring it into your system. When was the last time you bought something into your system and you chewed it up and it tastes good? So many times, stuff that we chew up every day, and I'm not talking, I'm talking in the spirit, some of the things that we hear, we, we chew it up and we bring it into our system. But when it gets into your system, it goes into the small, small intestines and it moves around and it gets to the pl place where it transports out of your body. But also you have to digest it. Once you ingest, you digest. That's mm -hmm. what a chemical breakdown is. It breaks down everything. So every mm -hmm. time, every now and then in life, you need to break down some things. Every now and then you have to, to look at your organization and break it down. Say, now what can I do better? Every now and then in your life, you can break down some things. Say now, okay, I've did this, this long, this don't work, let me do it this way. So you have to understand that you have to ingest, digest, absorb it then you have to expel it like you allude to it early anita sometimes there's some things in your life that you need to get rid of it needs to be expelled from your body it no longer serves a purpose that's what ingestion is it's no longer serves a purpose you've you've ingest digest absorb and now you got to get rid of it some things uh in your digestive system stays there because it serves a purpose but other things in your digestive system you get uh, expelled because it's no longer any good Mm -hmm. It's already went through whatever process it's gone through. And so you have to know that life is a process. And sometimes, you know, along the way, you know, you may not digest or you may not get rid of stuff that you should get rid of. And I know I, I read some years ago about, uh, I think it was John Wayne, and they were talking about when he, he mm -hmm. passed away, how he had all this beef. Yeah, 30 pounds. Yeah, uh, that was not digested. Mm -hmm. Do you know how, how much that we've carrying around inside of us that needs to be expelled? Mm -hmm. That serves no purpose? That's weighed it cause Oh, oh say that. It, it, it caused you to be sick. It caused you not to want to go forth. You you carrying all this stuff that serves no purpose. You carrying somebody else, you carrying somebody else a uh, life. You're worried about your mama. You're worried about your sister. You're carrying everything. And when God told you to give it to him, take all your cares to him, for he cared for you. And so we carrying stuff that we need to flush out of our system. And I, I promise you, when you expel stuff that doesn't uh, mean you any good, you, you'll feel You're better. <laughs> you'll feel better. If you've been constipated, I'm just going to go there. If you've uh -huh. been constipated for a long time and you take the right medicine, you expel that, which it serves no purpose, you feel so much better. Oh, really? <laughs> <laughs> oh, you have to learn how to flush your digestive system. You do take in, but there's something you have to release. Mm-hmm. So not only you have to make healthy choices, you got to find out what, what, what do I need? You know, what kind of food should I eat? I know I need to drink water. You need to eat more whole grains and you need to learn about food and you need to cut back on some food. So there's some things we need to cut back on. There's some things that we've been doing that that's not healthy for us. We, we've done it that way because that's just the way it's been. But some people you got to cut off. Mm. Some situations you got to let go of. So you got to learn how to make healthy choices in your life, in your spiritual life, because you'll end up not feeling well because you're carrying everything that God told you, that God didn't tell you to carry. Mm -hmm. I, I don't know if you like me, I've carried things. You know, I worry about people. I, you know, I, I, I well, I worry about my children, not me. I'm a mother. But, but sometimes we take on other people's problems yeah, as do. if they're our own. Yes. Because Anita, someone called me today and asked me, did I know somebody that had, she needed some money to pay a bill by Friday. And all of a sudden, I just became overwhelmed. I said, God, see, this is what I'm talking about. This is what I'm talking about. See, when people be needing help, 
And I had came, <laughs> and, and then I immediately took on that Your anxiety. You yes. Start, yeah. yeah. And she really needed the help. And I told God, I said, God, you know, if I had it, I'll give it to her. And, you know, so sometimes we care. It's not always a bad thing, but it's all right to carry people to a point. You don't need, I'm sure in your life, you've raised children, you've carried them. And sometimes you're like, look, look, I, I've done all I can do. You on your own. Done. Are you on your own. You got this. So, so you the man, you the man, or you the girl, or you the woman, I, you handle it. But we have to release mm -hmm. and we have to make healthy choices. And the reason why we have to make healthy choices, because God have a mandate on our lives. Mm -hmm. And a lot of times we get so bogged down in everything that we can't even do what we've been called to do because mm -hmm. we, we make some unhealthy choices. We, you know, we carry in people. We have not flushed our system out. We still got toxin that we need to get rid of mm -hmm. and we need to have monitor our intake. So soul food, what are you eating? What you eating, Nita? What you been eating? Hey, let me <laughs> tell you, this one right here is getting me. Get me. Yeah, we've been eating everything. I love certain food, but some food, we got to let it go. And I, it's a live, live by design. Live and life, I'm sorry. Live life. I know, I know it was life, but I want to say live, live since it was there. <laughs> Yeah, by design, not default. Living by design means, means living mindfully. The more mindful moments you have each day, the better decision you make. You oh. be mindful of what's going on in your life. You know, you, we, we get up every morning and we don't even have a plan. Mm. You know? Uh, yeah, I mean, okay, we're going to, I'm not talking about the plan about, oh, we're going to get up and go to work and okay, we're going to go to, I'm talking about a plan, what we're going to do for God. Or what are we going to do for the, what God has called us to do? What are we going to do for our ministry? Are we going to get on, on, on Periscope today? Are we going to write the book, write on our book today? We, we, ha, we, don't, we don't live by, by design a lot of time, but by default. Default simply means we revert back to what was. Because when you have a computer, and I know this because, and if you put the password in, and a lot of times you don't do everything that you're supposed, it'll, it'll uh, default back to its original state. Okay. And so, so many times we go back to our original state. Why? Because we're afraid to go forward. So uh -huh. we don't live uh, life by design. We live by default because uh, uh, like the children of Israel say, well, when I was back there, when I, you know, we had the leeks and onion. Now you got us out here. But what about when I was back there? We forgot back there wasn't all that good. We'd be we not able to go get the big uh, and we be not able to go get the big fruit. Yeah. So we go back to what was uh -huh. and not living life by by design. Mm -hmm. you know, design means that there's a purpose for my life. Mm -hmm. And the key is like with us, we found our purpose. So the key is to to find our purpose. Don't live life like you get up every morning. Okay, well, you know, I'm going to do this. I'm going to do that. But we need to learn how to live by design. First, the first thing we need to do is stop living on autopilot. Mm. So many of us live on autopilot. You dread the day ahead of you. You wake up on dread the day because there's nothing you're really looking forward to do. You, you, you get up in the morning. You, are, you wake up in the morning and say, oh, boy, okay, another day. Hmm. Well, I don't think the day probably going to be like yesterday. Well, Lord, I don't know whatever you say, but well, you know, God, if anything bad, it happened to me, you know, so we already, we already have set ourselves up for failure. Your daily routine is predictable. You already know what you're going to do. Well, I'm going to do this. No, step out. Sometimes do something different. You know, if you, if you eat it at, uh, if you eat lunch at 12 o'clock, then eat lunch at 12, 15, <laughs> stop being so predictable. And you do things, and we do things without, without thinking. You take action without stopping to think about what you're doing, how you're doing it, and why you're doing it. So we do stuff, and we don't even think why we do it. We just do it. And I find myself just doing like a, a just a rigid, just get up in the morning. Oh, I got a hair, I got to be bare, uh, work at seven, you know. And so my life becomes humdrum and just the way it is. But no, I want to start living life on autopilot. God has, has a plan for me. He has a plan for you. God has designed for you. The key is you got to tap into what God has for you. And you got to believe it. And stop walking around on autopilot. Just know that you can do it. Mm -hmm. And next is don't let your uh, determinate, which means fix, settle, establish. Don't let time be fixed, settle, or established. There's 365 days in a year and there's 52 uh, weeks in a year and 20,000 a day and so on and so forth. For, so what you have to do is say, God, with every second that I have, 
I want to make sure that I'm doing something to better myself, to make a difference in somebody's life, to move to the next level. And sometimes with life, we get so caught up, Anita. I, I spent yesterday in some kind of funk. I don't even know. And I just sit on the bed and just was sitting there. Mm -hmm. You know, so I've been there before. Yeah, Anything? and we have we have those moments, y'all. But when we do, let's not let it be by default. Let's be by design. Get up and say, okay, I had my moment. I'm going to brush myself off. I'm going to move on. Because mm -hmm. time stands still for no man. I, I, I look back at my life. I remember for some reason, 35, when I was 35, it meant a lot to me. And here it is 25 years later. So here I am, 60 years old. And I'm saying, God, what have I did with the time? Where has the time gone? And for all these young people who's on here or will listen to this, Baby, time don't stand still. You may be fit, you may be beautiful and shaped, but times have time. Gravity is real. To, time. To pull, time, pull things down <laughs> that used to stand up perky. It'll make stuff hang that used to be tight. So, <laughs> you know, so you got to take that time and use it to the best of your ability. It's never too late. Now, I can't do anything by time pass. But I can do, I can make sure I make the best of what I have coming. But I want to, for the young people, take advantage of your time. Whatever it is, go after it with passion and with vengeance. If you fail, so what? At least you try. So if you fail, try something else. But make sure you use your time that God, that God has given you. I've been here 60 years. Everybody don't make it that, that long. Mm -hmm. There are young people that die every day. They're, they're babies, so use your time. Don't let time slip by you, and you don't walk in your anointing your ability. And next is take the micro minutes in life. And this, what I mean by that is this. We have to learn how to take time and set aside to do things that we like to do. And one of the first things I put on my list is keep inspiring quotes near you. Every now and then I go back and read my own quotes. And I, one of my favorite quotes is, I won't let my yesterday tell my today what to do. Mm. Because yesterday will tell me my today, yesterday will tell me my, I would not have made it as far as I have today. If I look back at yesterday, my mm. yesterday self told me I'll never make it. My yesterday self told me I'll never be anything. Mm -hmm. So take in any quote that inspires you and put it somewhere. If you like the Bible, take quotes. What better place to get quotes from than the word of God? Put it somewhere and remind you, I'm more than a conqueror. Mm -hmm. I can do anything but fail. Mm -hmm. So, you know, take those micro minutes in life. You know, work out, even if just for a little bit, to take a long walk, you know, just enjoy, like, take those few micro moments and minutes in life. It'll make a difference. I will. If I, if I read a scripture, I go and say, man, I, prime example, nigga, we were talking about T.D. Jakes, and I, he said something that was my micro uh, uh, a moment, you know, how he was talking about, we're so busy giving people inspiration, but not enough information. Mm -hmm. And I had never looked at life like that. With the church, we inspire people. But are we giving people enough information to get to the next level? Mm. Are we just inspiring them and, they, you know, they, they get a little quick jerk and maybe run around the church and get tired? But uh, once you finish inspiring people, are you giving them information to help them get to the next level? So take that micro um, minute in your life. And finally, you got the brush paint. You got the brush you have the, uh, the blank canvas. I wrote a quote on that and a poem. You have, you have the, the paintbrush, and all you got to do is dip it in the paint and start painting. How are you painting your life? Where are you going? So I paint, I'm painting this, this life. I am going to uh, go around. I'm speaking. I'm going to inspire women. I'm writing a book. I'm painting my canvas because I want, I'm, I already see this beautiful picture that I'm going to hang on my wall. So you guys, y'all got the, you got the brush. Now what you going to do with it? Five years from now, will your canvas still be white or will it have colors? Will it have life? Will it have pictures? So just, just know you live by design and you don't have to live by default. Mm -hmm. Wow. Get the paintbrush out and go to paint. <laughs> I'm telling everybody to paint. 
I'm gonna write one. Paint, 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 paint. Paint it. All right. And then when you get through that process, you know, it's so nice. Have you ever, like, at the end of the day, when you're clean, when you actually spend time to clean your house or clean your room or, you know, you get these, these, uh, clean, these spring cleanings first. One of my favorite day, times is when um, the housekeeper that I have sometimes comes and after Anna leaves, the house is just so clean. Everything is just so neat and spotless and it just feels so good to be so fresh and so clean. Because then you can find stuff, you can, you know, you can figure things out because you have a cleaner path. Yeah. Okay. And, and that, you know, when you get to that process after you have gone through the detoxification, everything about your life now is clear. The path is no longer muddy. Your thoughts are no longer cloudy. Your vision is no longer blurry. You can see, you can hear. I don't know about you, but I've gone on fast before. Like, you know, as a young person, one time I stepped in a fast and I didn't even mean to step in the fast. I didn't know it was a fast. <laughs> <laughs> I thought it was just a little church service because my cousin used to have those all the time. Miss Betty Wright, the clean up woman, no pain, no gain. I went up and I lived in the house, you know, and I went over there. I went to the house one day. She had these, had these two houses across the street from each other. I lived in a big house, and then she had this little duplex across the street where her closet was, and the bus driver left and everything. So I walked up in there, and she's like, oh, we have a service. And they were all wearing, you know, their little, little dollies and stuff on their head. And I was like, oh, I'm, I'm down for the church service. So I sat down, and I, we, they started worshiping, saying, so, okay, well, now, we can't have no water and no juice and no food. We just got our toothbrush. Like, every three hours, we're going to have prayer. I was like, oh. And they said, oh, we having a shut-in. Oh, my Lord. Boy, by day three, I could see, I could see my eyeball. <laughs> and my vision was, talk about a clearer path. Talk about a cleaner path. Everything, I mean, my hearing, my vision, my senses, I could smell from across the street all the jerk chicken that her husband was cooking. I could, sm I mean, everything about your senses start to liven up when everything is clean. That's how it is in your house. You can find stuff. Like, oh, this is where my, my earrings were. Oh, this is where my, my card was. Oh, I couldn't find my debit card. Lost it. No, you just needed to clean up and clear the path. And that's what happens with us spiritually. We can start thinking and hearing things and doing things because now it makes sense. Everything is not muddy and cloudy. We have a cleaner path. The other thing that happens is we find our peace. There's nothing more um, horrible than a person who is tormented and, they're pe and you have no peace. You're stressed out and just messed up. But when you go through this process, because a lot of times you know, when we're stressed and um, uh, weighted down with mess, we can't hear those, nu those nudging thoughts and those visions and those dreams and those ideas, and nothing makes sense. We can't even hear it. We can't even sense it because everything about our process there has been repressed because our emotions and everything is just all over the place. So we get no warning signs of nothing. We get beat up. Oh, God. Oh, God. If you get beat up in the spirit, I don't know why. It's just walk down. Detox. That's, what, that's why we have to go through the process. So when you detox, you find your peace. You're not tormented in your mind. You're not thinking all of the negative thoughts. And you're not telling yeah. yourself, I can't accomplish. I can't do this. never going to happen. Oh, God. I don't have no money. I don't have no support. Ain't nobody help me. You know, we go through those changes. <laughs> and we start getting crazy. Because we start pushing about what we don't have. You don't know what it's like. You don't understand. I don't have nobody. You know, whatever. It's time to get out of that process. So <laughs> that detox man and that path is clear you will find peace i can tell you honestly it may you may not get all of those problems you know like dealt with because i know sometimes we have some serious issues especially when it comes to the area of finances <laughs> you know i'm talking about all that yep <laughs> especially when it comes to financial situations and stuff like that there's something that you can't do anything about god just has to do it or he helps you figure it out or the chips will fall where they may. When you can't do anything about it, it doesn't make sense to start stressing and going, getting all dramatic as Yolanda said, like, oh God, I don't know what I'm gonna do. 
<laughs> you know what it's like? You don't understand because you got it. You got it all together. You don't know what people are going through. People can be going through all kinds of stuff, but just because they don't show it like you're showing it doesn't mean they're not. So I encourage you, get to that process and find your peace. Mm -hmm. And then there's something else I learned from physical detox detoxification is that we have to make sure that we replenish our system with probiotic because when you go through a cleansing or a colonic or a detoxification, your body, your intestines are rid of a flora supplement that you need in your system. It fights off harmful bacteria. And a lot of times we'll, you know, clean our systems out and we will use a moxtail. But you need to get probiotics. And I've learned, like, from doing different detox um, programs, at the end of the detox, I just don't go and get a whole plate of fried chicken or whatever. Because, you know, I, I, the detoxes I go on end in a juice fast and then a water fast and then a dry fast. And then by the time we go through that process and we haven't eaten in like five days, and this is like a 16 day process where we cut out little by little for the last five days, you're not eating, you're only drinking and it's cutting down little by little. And that last day you're, you're having nothing. And so by the time you get to the end of that, the thought of a person going into it would be, oh, I'm going to eat this. And I'm going to, woo, when I break my fast, no, when I break my fast, I'm going to have this, I'm going to get some pizza, I'm going to have some wings. But that's the last thing you need to do. You have to now replenish yourself with the right stuff you need your spiritual probiotics you need the things that are going to fight off stuff and this is where those affirmations and quotes and scripture and prayer this is where that stuff comes into play you have to build yourself up get in the mirror and talk to yourself and affirm yourself and get your quotes and get your encouragement and get your scriptures get everything and start giving yourself your spiritual probiotic. Can't forget that. That is very, very, very important. You need that supplement in your life in order to continue the process forward. You've cleaned out all of that mess. Now you got to build yourself back up. Even when I take the flora supplement, I can't go after taking the flora, um, the probiotic and go and eat a bunch of food. I had to start off with eating watermelon. And then I add a little bit of fresh fruit the next day. And then I eat some, some vegetables or a salad or something a little later. And then maybe later on that evening, I might eat um, a little bit of cooked vegetables. And then I add little by little, I add little things to my diet until I can work my way all the way back up to the way I eat. So in which I eat very little meat, but still, even if you're going to add meat to your diet, it's the last thing. So don't come out of a spiritual detox and go straight in and try to do all of this stuff and, and you know, and, and I want to go fight every devil, you know. Listen, let me tell you, you're going to fall flat on your face. You have to build yourself up because you didn't get that toxic overnight. And now that you rid yourself of the toxicity in your soul, you have to build yourself up with all of the good stuff, that nourishment, that probiotic, those supplements, the right vitamins and minerals that you need spiritually because when you do that is when you get your life back mm -hmm. because a lot of us have been out of control i can speak for anita there have been times where i thought you know it was it this is what life is going to be for me i just want to curl up and crawl up somewhere and die let me just go ahead and just find me a little spot put the blanket over my head so i can't see nobody or how about this the people who walk into the building with sunglasses on. I can still see you. And I can see your eyes through the darkness. You looking at me, I can still see your eyeballs. Look at how dark your sunglasses are. You're not hiding from anybody. So take off those sunglasses and take your life back. Mm -hmm. Get your life back. Get your purpose and your dreams back. Like Annette say, you got the brush, paint. Start painting that canvas. Start putting that stuff back together. You've gone through something. You've cleared it out. you sorted it through. you got to keep pile. you got to throw away pile. Throw away the stuff you got to throw away. Make everything else neat and orderly. Put things decent and in order. Write stuff down. Get your formulas together. Get all your probiotics and all your supplements. Get your peace. you got a clean path. Don't clutter it back up. Don't clutter it back up overnight. Because you know what? We're going to go through this process over and over again. Because like I said, our bodies get toxins without even trying. You're going to get toxins in your spirit, in your soul. You're going to get them. And guess what? You can see the signs. 
Start seeing those signs. Don't let those signs just go unnoticed. See the signs and then start working on detoxing all over again. That's how you do it. That's soul detox. Whew. <laughs> what a blessing. I'm telling you, and that it has been, it has been an interesting path, I would say, the last two weeks that I have been going through this process and it's not over. This process is not over. And you know why? And I'm going to tell you something. I'm going to be just a little transparent. I'm not going to tell you all my business. <laughs> this is going to be all on YouTube. Not yet. My business is coming out in my printed book. But, <laughs> we're not all of it. <laughs> but, I have been going through this process because, you know, when you're out of God's will and you have not done things the way you're supposed to do and in the timing that you're supposed to do them, you have to go through the process. You have to go through the consequences. You have to go through the, it, 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 there's, a, there's a system. And, you know, the law of reciprocity is very real. God is no respect of persons. That which a man soweth shall he also reap. And when you don't sow right or when you don't put the time in right and when you don't do things, when you know you were supposed to do it in February and you do it in June, then you're dealing with the consequences of getting in your own way. And a lot of times we overthink stuff. And that's where I was. I was overthinking, overthinking. And when I released the ebook, it was like, I got a mandate. And it was like, I got to put this out now. I got to put this out Friday. I have to put this out now. I could not wait. That's how much pressure was on me. You know why? Because I was supposed to release it in February. Because by now, I should have been releasing the printed work. Or at least on the road of trying to get it published. And the problem is, you know, I'm behind and I need to get where my blessings are. And because I'm not where my blessings are, all kinds of stuff starts happening. But if I was in the right place, you know, it's like, oh, no. So what else do I do now? We're going to detox. We're going to refresh, restart, reboot, which is what I've been doing. Acknowledge. I've acknowledged what I did and what I didn't do. And guess what? There's not anything that I can do about the situation. God has to handle it. But I have to put myself in place for God to do his work. It's like, okay, all right, God, you got this because I can't do anything with it. I can't do anything about it. But day by day, I've been getting little, like little nudges like, okay, do this. We'll move this over here. We'll put this in this place. Okay, we'll do this. And then I look up and it's like, wow, okay. I just bought myself like three or four more days of sanity. <laughs> I don't know what I'm going to do next week, but for right now, I feel good. And that's how sometimes we have to go through the process. So it, for me, it's going through the process because I knew I should have done something way back in February and I didn't. And because I didn't, things keep moving. Time keeps moving. You might be standing still. I'm not but here, I, here, now imagine this. This is um, me and the book in February and this is time. Time is going. And then I'm like, oh, she's time to get off the scale. Oh, I'm supposed to release the book. So now I came right here. And time is all the way ahead of me. But I'm so grateful that God works things out for our good, that even when we mess up, he still makes a way of escape. He still has a ram in the bush. And he's never going to leave you just hanging. But you have to deal with the consequences. You have to deal with the, you have to go through the process and you have to deal with it. It's just plain and simple. It's not going to go away. You can't just close your eyes. It's not going to go away. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I mean, Annette? Oh, yeah. I, without a doubt. And I think uh, sometimes when we go through, and it is our fault, but you know what? How about that's going to bless somebody else? Mm -hmm. And that's somebody going to say, you know what? I'm going. I'm going to uh, get going, and I'm on. I'm not going to let time catch, cause time catch you and pass you. You look back, time, like you said, time way ahead. Time passed by me, and it's all the way up there, and mm -hmm. I'm trying to catch up. And that's what you have, you know. And sometimes it happens, but Yolanda, 
Sharon, Lashavia, do not let time pass you. Anybody else that watches this later, don't let time pass you. You keep up and you do what you're supposed to do when you're supposed to do it. And stop trying to, and to my problem was, I was looking at what I didn't have. I have less now than I had then. And if I had done it then, things might be a little better now. Yeah. And I'm like, I was less prepared and had less, you know, I'm like, I wasn't all the way there, but I had a little more then. If I would have done it then, I could have probably made something really, really happen for the now because I couldn't see what was going to be happening in June and why it was going to be harder for me to do it in June. But God knew. Yeah. That's why you say do it in February. Yeah. I'm like, no, I'm going to just wait. I'm going to wait. I ain't ready yet. I'm trying to get a website finished. But then I ain't finished the website. Oh, I'm just trying to do that. Okay, I'm going to get back on it. Oh, I just was so, oh. Oh, and then life happens, and then you get twisted up and see you get muddy. I got muddy, and I couldn't find my way out. Like, okay, okay, we're working on the website. Oh, but I got to do this. Oh, I got to work on the class. I gotta work. Oh, wait a minute, the website. You see how your thoughts get muddy? Yeah. Everything is tight, and you can't figure out what system to work on. What, am I, what should I do first? Everything is just there, and it's just a mess. You have no system. Nothing written down. Like Annette said, you don't even have a plan for tomorrow. Yeah. Just get up like, That's why you had the detox, Nita. Guess I pray. <laughs> I guess I pray. Oh, yeah. I got I dare you to declare by Anita Wilson. Let me pull that out. I'm gonna read a chapter today. Hmm. Okay. What I'm gonna do now? Oh, I'm gonna work on this. It's like no plan. That's what the detox. You're right. That's why you have to detox. Mm -hmm. Detox. You clear the path. Your mindset. Everything is good. Wow. So, does anybody want to say anything tonight? I'm going to stop our recording. Hold on. Thank you all for watching. You're know, watching this for the first time. We stopped the recording because our people don't like to talk. They don't like to talk when the recording is. <laughs> so, I was just I'm going to stop the recording, period. Not for them. <laughs> because they're not going to say anything anyway. And I'm going to put their names out there because Sharon, Yolanda, and Lashavia. Lashavia still won't even let us see us. We finally see a picture of Lashavia next year. So... <laughs>